Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Today I wanted to discuss the world's first self-hosted game. Well it may be a little bit of an exaggeration but it's pretty close to that. So Zork is an interactive text-based adventure originally developed by MIT in 1979 for the DEC PDP-11 computer. The first computer I used at work was a digital equipment corporation, LSI-11, which was DEC's first reduced cost PDP-11 CPU, and it used the new state-of-the-art at the time, Qbus. Specifically, I worked on a DEC LSI-1102, which had a 32-bit address space and could address up to 64 kilobytes of memory. Folks, that's not megabytes. You read it correctly. That's kilobytes. I wrote programs in Fortran 77 for space and ground-based motion sickness testing and analysis in NASA's Johnson Space Center Life Sciences Directorate Neuroscience Laboratory. I created code that controlled and analyzed data from the rotating chair and Hoffman drop reflex experiments for NASA. And yes, it really was rocket science. So I had a Hazeltine 1510 green screen monitor on my desk with an RS-232 serial cable connecting it to the LSI-11 as an interactive terminal at 2400 baud. And that was actually pretty quick because in the day we would normally communicate at 1200 baud with a hardwired terminal, believe it or not. So I got a copy of Zork from the Digital Equipment Corporation User Society, DECAS for short, Special Interest Group Software Submissions 9-Track Tape. You heard it right, 9-Track Tape. I had to load Zork and try it out as soon as I got my brand new LSI-11 configured in the office in 1981. So my boss and I were the life sciences computing folks and he used Zork to show me the techniques for data input, tables, and parsing by analyzing the source code since we had the source code for it. I suppose that was probably, in a way, the first open source software if you think about it. So I found a library of vintage computing for PDP-11 computing and GitHub at the address that you see listed here. So. Understanding the history of retro computing for programs such as Zork gives you an appreciation of the limits at the time. We had only 32 kilobytes of memory on our LSI-11, not the maximum 64 kilobytes of memory, and we hosted two users on two separate Hazeltine terminals. So there were actually three versions of Zork, Zork 1, Zork 2, and Zork 3, but we only had Zork running because you could only run one at a time due to memory constraints and they couldn't combine Zork 1, 2, and 3 together in a single program because the memory was insufficient. So we're going to host the Vintage Computing Library and I'm going to show you how to configure Zork to be a captive program accessed from an SSH session and I'll make it available via Apache Guacamole to make it web-based. And I had a previous video talking about Apache Guacamole and how it could be configured. So if you're interested in that, certainly go back and watch that. So let's go install the original Zork program and test it out. It might sound really strange at first to be self-hosting late 1970s software on a new system, but we can learn a lot from history. If you watch my channel frequently, you know that we talk a lot about LexD containers. And here we're creating a LexD container with a custom image that I have that's actually named Ubuntu-2004 that has a number of additions to the standard Ubuntu-2004. In addition to that, I have a standard custom profile called VLAN80 that will present this container out on my VLAN80. And then I have boot.autostart set to true, which means that when the LexD host uh, boots, it starts up the container automatically. So here we're creating a container that we're going to call Zork. 
um, and when it gets done being created, we'll be able to connect into it. So now that I have my container, I'm going to do a Lexi exec Zork in the Bosch shell, and that'll connect me to the root account on that particular container. I'm going to do an add user Scott. Oops, that's right. Scott already exists. I mentioned that when we first started talking about this. Um, so I'll go ahead and S you over to the Scott account. Now that I'm on the Scott account, I'm going to go get the retro container that has a number of other programs besides just Zork, but we're only going to feature Zork today. If you look at the URL that I presented in the presentation, you can see what other applications um, are offered out there. So by doing the Git clone, we make a local copy of the uh, GitHub repository, and it creates a uh, subfolder called Vintage Computing. CD into Vintage Computing, into the Setup folder, and then what I'm going to do is run the setup command, provide my sudo password, and it will run, up, run off and do the installation. Now that the Classic Computing Archive is installed with all of its various products, much more than just the Zork application that we're going to look at, I kind of remember back 40 plus years ago when I did it, and I believe it took a lot longer from nine track tape. In any event, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and change the ownership of all of the files um, to my user account, which I just did there. And then I'm going to CD back to the home directory. Let's create a script called zork.sh with the nano editor and we're going to paste in the contents of that script and that script basically has a section that traps control C in the event that the user enters a control C it says goodbye and it exits them out of the script otherwise it runs the um, uh, command to fire up Zork which is VINT space Zork dash GLK and then it exits anyway so we have the case where either we run the uh, game to conclusion or they control C abort or they exit it. In either case, it exits the Bosch shell and does not leave them on the system. So I'm going to do a control X. Yes, save the modified buffer as zork.sh. To make the script execute when the user logs in, we want to edit with nano dot Bosch RC which is a command that is run every time you start up a terminal session. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the very bottom of the file, the old fashioned way. And I'm going to paste in a line that basically says source dot slash zork dot sh, which executes the script and an ampersand ampersand exit. So the source command basically means that it will exit the shell upon completion and we add an exit to essentially log off, just in case that was not effective. So we go to Control X and Yes to save that. Next, I exit my Lexi exec session, and I do a Lexi list, and I find out my container for Zork is running at 192.168.80.191. I exit my LexD host and I say SSH over to 192.168.80.191 and you can see that it is asking me to accept the fingerprint. I say yes. I type in my password and there I'm connected and there's the prompt for Zork. If I do a control C it exits back out immediately. If I log back in again and type in my password and I exit the program normally with a quit command and I say yes I want to leave the game 
it also exits back from the SSH command. So here we are at Apache Guacamole, and I've covered Apache Guacamole on my channel before, and what it allows for is it allows for a web page based HTML page to interface to either an RDP or an SSH session on a server. So in this case, I've defined it for the Zork server that we just built, and if I click on it, it will connect SSH to it in a web page, and you're actually looking at a web page here that is connected to an SSH session for this text-based um, software. So you can see here that it says, Welcome to Dungeon. This version was created on 1st of October, 94. It's been rewritten, and there were some additional things that they put into it. It's still the original game, but they had to adopt it for Linux since um, really uh, in the early 80s, Linux didn't exactly exist <laughs> or not in the form that this was written in because it was originally written for a PDP-11. So anyway, uh, in this particular case, you can say um, open mailbox. And then you can say read leaflet. And so it says, Dungeon is a game of adventure, danger, and low cunning. In it, you will explore some of the most amazing territory ever seen by mortal man. Hardened adventurers have run screaming from the terrors contained within. In Dungeon, the intrepid explorer delves into the forgotten secrets of a lost labyrinth deep in the bowels of the earth, searching for vast treasures long hidden from prying eyes, treasures guarded by fearsome monsters and diabolical traps. No system should be without one. Dungeon was created at the MIT Laboratory for Computer Science by Tim Anderson, Mark Blanc, and Bruce Daniels, and Dave Liebling. It was inspired by the adventure game of Crowther and Woods and the long tradition of fantasy and science fiction games. The original version was written in MDL, and the current version was translated from MDL into Fortran by a somewhat paranoid Digital Equipment Corporation engineer who prefers to remain anonymous. So uh, anyway, you can type help in here. Um, there's lots of uh, information about the various commands they give you. You can go through the help. Um, most commonly, you can just say look. And you can kind of test different verbs to find out what's going on. But basically, you're working your way through a maze to uh, acquire various objects and kind of solve the puzzle. And that's basically how, uh, how this works. So if I try to exit the game by either doing a control C or a quit, either one, I say quit and it says, do you want to leave the game? I say yes. And it says hit any key to exit. I do that and it immediately goes back to my home screen on my Apache Guacamole, which is equivalent to exiting the SSH session. So I feel pretty accomplished here because what we did is we took a late 1970s game, a textual based adventure that's basically a terminal application, and we hosted it in an HTML5 web page through Apache Guacamole. In summary, according to the archive, the Colossal Cave Adventure might be the first ever text based adventure, but I have sweet memories for Zork. I encourage you to look at the other programs in the archive, which are installed as a part of this tutorial. I just did not review them. We learned how to make a simple Linux script captive in this video, which forces a logout when either you exit the program or do a control C. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and we'll see you next time.